Many of the world's best golfers aren't using the latest 2024 drivers, which we're being led to believe, but instead choosing drivers which you could easily obtain for not that much money as a cheap upgrade in 2024. Poor, this thing goes an absolute mile. <laughs> the G425 Max did break the 10K barrier two years ago. I absolutely love this. Th Why would you spend any more money? I was amazed with the research on this video as I wasn't quite aware of what the most popular drivers on tour currently are. And even though we're not going to be talking about the newer stuff and the more affordable options, it's quite interesting to see exactly what head styles are more popular than others. And that's putting brands to one side altogether. <laughs> I just automatically presumed TaylorMade and Callaway were the number one picks and probably the most used on tour by the best golfers in the world. And I think there's two reasons for that. Number one, when one of their tour pros does win an event, let's be honest, we all definitely hear about it. The other side to that is the bigger names in golf, the ones that draw attention and let's say are some of the best players in the world are signed to TaylorMade and Callaway. But I found this great website called PGA Club Tracker, which basically tries to keep up to date with all the players, drivers and equipment on tour. And I must say at this point, I have cross-referenced this from other sources to make sure the five drivers I'm gonna show you through this video that are very affordable and great upgrades in my opinion, are well very much in the player's bag as of today. But from first glance, look how many players have Titleist and ping drivers in the bag compared to Callaway and TaylorMade. And at this point, I must say, of course, this is down to money and contracts, and Titleist especially are very good at getting to the grassroots, especially when some of these pros are growing, so that they will have a massive stable of players using their equipment. However, there are players that aren't contracted with Titleist and ping that are choosing to use their equipment when money's not involved. So why is that? We only have to look at what I can describe as a very interesting post from my golf spy where they rated drivers for people that swing over 105 miles an hour club head speed. And at the top of that list was the QI10 LS. And at the bottom is the TSR3. And you compare that to what the pros are actually using on tour, which obviously all of them have a faster club head speed of 105. The TSR3 is the most popular and only a handful of people are using the QI10 LS. The point is putting contracts to one side. Every tour pro with their brand is able to give them a driver that works for them. Not only in 2024, but let's say over the last six years, driver manufacturers have come up with some of the best equipment we've ever seen. And it's very hard to beat, which is no wonder why some of the best in the world are still using older models. So let's talk about the first one, shall we? It was no secret over the last couple of years that Colin Morikawa wasn't getting on with the Stealth series or the newer edition of it. Meaning for his most recent wins, he took the Stealth out and put... Well, the sim back in. And I remember reading at the start of the year that Colin Morikawa's bag had the new QI10 in. And this was a big thing for Taylor Made as it finally meant that he was gonna upgrade from his old faithful and obviously go into the newer product. But it didn't last long and the original sim driver made its way back in to Colin's bag over the last couple of tournaments. And as recent as the Valero Texas Open, arguably one of Taylor Made's best looking drivers in a long time was back in action. Core, cool, this thing goes an absolute mile. <laughs> However, this is the first installment of don't buy what the pros are using. As TaylorMade for me is a long ball machine, launches high, spins incredibly low, one of the best at doing it. Meaning if you are fast, this thing is going a long way. But just like everything in golf, you can't have best of both worlds. Meaning if you struggle to get the ball up in the air with your drive, or, or let's be honest, you don't necessarily hit it out the middle 100% of the time, I'm gonna say I meant to do that. <laughs> it is gonna be less forgiving than something like this. Okay, Simon, that's all well and good, but I want a recent 
PGA Tour win. I want a pro that's used this to great effect and took down the rest of the field with a driver that's under 200 pounds. Akshay Batia won the Valero Texas Open just last week. And when I finished building my budget bag for 2024 this year, There's realistically only one driver that I'm gonna put in the top spot. Now it's fair to say Akshay's driver is nowhere near from your bog standard. Customization to the next level. And then I'll show you some prices here on the right hand side is a great value option in my eyes now as I can't see it getting much cheaper over the next three to four years. Not to mention Callaway and TaylorMade have had this battle of low spin, long drives head ever since the great Big Bertha Epic. And to be honest, the Rogue ST Max and even with some hesitation when it first came out, I thoroughly love. It ticks every box in my eyes. as not necessarily the longest, but that combination of somewhat distance and somewhat forgiveness. I absolutely love this. Why would you spend any more money? Now we shouldn't ignore the second most used driver on tour, which is the G430 LST. So the smaller head type than this, the lower spinning version. And again, it confirms what I say, every manufacturer is gonna make a driver for every player out there. As if you're a ping fan, they want to make sure they cater for you. And sadly, I haven't got the G430 LST with me, nor do I actually want to talk about the G430 that I have in my hands, but actually an older model that seemed to break records with no one really talking about it. Until now. The whole year we've been talking about the 10K drivers, the inertia barrier, all this kind of stuff, but people seem to forget, especially Ping, the G425 Max did break the 10K barrier two years ago. And I've given you a low spin head and the Rogue ST Max is kind of that middle ground. Well, the G425 Max is as forgiving as it comes and thankfully somewhat getting cheaper. But Simon, you need a pro on tour using the G425 Max. Sadly, I can't find that, but I have got one that's using the G425 LST. And the fact this player is in the top 10 rankings in the world and hasn't upgraded to the G430, probably says something a bit more about technology versus just being confident. Victor Hovland currently has the G425 LST in the bag confidently as well. And I talk about this all the time. A lot of pros seem to do it a lot more with their fairway woods or potentially driving irons, that confident club, that cheat stick. But players like Colin, players like Akshay, players like Victor Hovland, When they find something that works, they stick with it, which I wish a lot more of you guys did as well. The point is the G425 was a very good driver. There's a reason it was so popular over the last two years. And as I'll show you prices, it's holding its price well. I would see this driver as an investment. It's gonna be more because the demand for it's just that much higher. But just like the Rogue ST, it's still gonna hold its price. A Ping G400 Max is still going for 200 pounds, and that's near on six years old. But let's talk about the last choice, and we probably should mention Titleist, considering it is the most used on tour, even if it is contractual. Now, I briefly want to mention the TSI3, because if you look on the clubtracker.com website, a dozen players have got this in the bag. However, if you go through the list, that some of the updates were quite old. So let's be honest, it's probably more like five, six. A player like Max Fitzpatrick that hasn't got a contract with Titleist is seen using the TSI3. And I must also say that over the last month, he has also been seen using the TSR3. That's why I love watching players that haven't got a contract with manufacturers, because why are they using that? Why do they want that club? I remember reading an article of Matt talking about fairway woods and he couldn't use a TaylorMade or Callaway fairway wood because they were so deep faced top to bottom. That's why he's been seen using the Cobra Aerojet and has always opted for the more higher spinning drivers such as Ping and potentially tightless in certain head types. Ryan Harmon is a great example of this, using the TSI2 to great effect around Royal Liverpool and virtually tore apart the place as one of the only players that could find a fairway. However, the Titleist TSI range isn't my best value option. 
the TS is. And you're probably wondering what pro is using a tightless driver that's near on four years old. Well, let me tell you. It's my last installment to this list. And I want you to take a note out of Brian's book and also Patrick's. We're gonna go for the age of Patrick still using a TS3 driver. And of course, for a lot of us, it's probably still a bit too unforgiving and low spinning to get it up in the air. Therefore, I want to go older. I wanna to go to the TS series, but go to the TS2. This would just go above for me, the Ping G425 Max in terms of forgiveness and helping getting that ball up in the air and sit below just behind the Rogue ST. Guys, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this one. Any questions, sasgolfacademy.com. Catch you guys later.